Okay, we're gonna do the cleaning service now, and I wanted to show the gauge connections. Again, we are, are teed in. This is the fuel pressure line originally that would go down in this location. We have a tee in. This is our pressure gauge attached here. So gauge teed into the fuel rail. Okay, for this, for this next step, this is really important, and you wanna make sure that fuel pressure holds, and you also want to know what your fuel pressure is at. So go ahead and turn that pump on. Again, we're using scan tool bi-directional controls here. See, so we're about 47 PSI operating pressure. Um, that's good, you can turn it off. This is a returnless system. Fuel pressure regulator is in the tank. Fuel pump's in the tank, obviously. 47 pounds of pressure, remember that number, 47 pounds. And also, what's important is that pressure holds. If pressure does not hold on shutdown, we're gonna have an issue doing this because what will happen is when we put our pressurized cleaner on the fuel rail, we'll dump it back to the tank. We don't want it in the tank. We wanna run the car on this stuff, so pressure has to hold. If you have a bleed down problem, we'll have to follow bleed down procedures, pinch off different hoses. Now in this case, th these are plastic lines, so we would have to block hoses off, disconnect them, and um, keep the fuel from running back to the tank. Um, so for this next part, we need to disable the fuel pump. And uh, this part's critical to make sure that we do it correctly. And um, there's different ways to do it. Some cars have bypasses, older GMs for example. I don't believe this car has it, but older GMs have uh, bypasses through the oil pressure switch circuit that keep the fuel pump alive. So you can pull the fuel pump relay out and the car will still run the fuel pump. So you have to be careful in how you disable a fuel pump, especially if you're gonna block off lines and pinch off lines. Um, if you think you disabled a fuel pump and you didn't and you blocked that line off, by the time you're done doing your injection service, you killed the fuel pump. Because the whole time that pump was running, you were basically deadheading that pump not giving it anywhere to go, and you overheated it and killed it. So this part's important. We need to disable this fuel pump, and we're gonna check ourselves and make sure. Okay, before we disable this fuel pump, I'm gonna actually use the fuel that's in the tank for my cleaning kit. And uh, so we need to get some fuel first before we disable the pump. You know, this isn't the only way to do it. Of course, if you have some gasoline sitting around, mix it up, that's fine, but I typically don't. Uh, the cleaner that we're using is uh, this stuff right here, upper engine cleaner. It's made for GM vehicles, and we're mixing it about 15%, 15% cleaner to 85% gasoline. And I'm using a uh, uh, a container that's going to be air pressure that's going to supply our pressure for our rail. I already have the cleaner in here, and what I typically do to get gasoline is I have a fuel pressure gauge connected already, and on my gauge, I have a bleed, and all I do is open my bleed and put gasoline in here from the tank. Uh, this is where it's nice to have bi-directional controls to uh, make sure that you know we're not running the car with fuel vapors everywhere. So go ahead and turn that pump on for me. And so I'm filling this up. It's gonna go in cycles, but that's okay. It's just an easy place to get gasoline from. Oops. One more? Okay, good. So my container's full of a mixture of gasoline and cleaner. Again, it's about 15% cleaner. You know, there's some sites that'll tell you 10%, some other ones that'll say 15. We're going with 15. <clears throat> and I now have this ready to go, so we have our gasoline and our mixture. Now we'll disable the fuel pump. This part's important to make sure you do it right. Um, in our case, we pulled a wiring diagram, but we're going after a relay. It's called the circuit opening relay, which is a fuel pump relay on a Toyota. I know this isn't a Toyota, but technically the engine, it's a Toyota. Um, I'm gonna disable this relay. Just unplug it.
All right, so the relay relay is unplugged, and what we want to make sure we don't want to just uh, take this for granted that <clears throat> just because we unplug the pump relay, that the pump isn't going to run. So we're going to start the car, and we're going to make sure that our pressure in the gauge drops all the way down and the car stalls. That's what we want to see. Go ahead and start it. All right, you see the gauge drop. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and crank it again. Let's make sure that our fuel pump is not running. Okay, good. That is a critical step to make sure that you disabled the pump. Um, and again, that would be more critical if we're blocking off fuel lines. You don't want to block off a fuel line and not disable a pump. You'll ruin that pump. The other thing too about um, taking pump relays out, some of these circuits share power feed between the fuel pump and the fuel injectors. And that would be a problem too. I need my injectors to fire during this process because we need the fuel entering the engine, we need the engine running. So keep that in mind too. On some cars, you have to crawl underneath and disconnect the fuel pump at the tank because there's shared circuitry. And that's the only way you're gonna be able to disable the pump. So in our case, we're good to go. We disabled the pump and uh, we're ready to do the cleaning now. All right, for this part, I'm gonna try to stay out of the screen as much as possible so you can see what I'm doing. Um, at this, this point, I'm just gonna un unplug my pressure gauge. Of course, my adapter is still there. It's the same adapter that my pressure kit or cleaning kit uses. And I'm gonna take the cleaning kit hose and attach that to that adapter. And this is operated off of air pressure. So we wanna make sure that our pressure's not too high. Let me get you up here on this a little bit better. There's a gauge at the top that we can turn or a dial that adjusts the pressure. There's your pressure gauge. And do you guys remember what pressure we wanna stay below? 47 was our system pressure. If we go above 47 PSI on this vehicle, we're gonna dump it back to the tank. We don't want to do that. So truthfully, we wanna run this car well under that number. I'm gonna to try to run it maybe 30, 35, and I know that you know, system pressure is supposed to be higher than that, but that doesn't matter. We want this car to run. As long as it runs at a lower pressure, we're gonna be fine, okay? So we want to stay below that 47 number. That's why we checked that pressure in the first place. So I'm connected to the rail. I'm gonna open up the valve at the bottom to allow the fuel in to the rail. And I'm gonna plug my line on top. And hopefully my pressure's below 47 initially. If it's not, we're gonna have to hurry up and start the car and adjust the dial and get it down below that. Again, we don't wanna dump this back to the tank. And I'm at 42 on the gauge right now with air pressure in there. So we're actually ready to go. Go ahead and start the car. All right, so we're now running off of this pressurized container. I'm gonna turn this pressure down a little bit. And the only reason I'm doing that is, uh, well, a couple reasons. The gauge could be wrong on this pressurized container, and um, I'm actually reading more pressure than what the gate, or I actually have more pressure than what the gauge is showing. And I just wanna stay away from that, that regulated dump pressure. And so I'm about, about 30 PSI, about 28, I'm gonna go up just a little bit. This takes a little bit of tweaking. We just want to run it at a pressure where that car is not going to stall. And, and that's it. And we let the car run until the cleaner uh, runs out. So this whole container depends on the car. Uh, I've had cars run for 40 minutes on this amount of fuel. So we wait until the cleaner's gone. Obviously, the bigger the engine, the faster this is going to run out. As a rule, what I generally what I generally follow is I want to see at least 10 minutes of run time. A V8 engine, 10 minutes. If you run this for two minutes and it's empty, you did something wrong. 
And, and what you did wrong is you dumped it all back to the tank. So start our clock. We want to see at least 10 minutes on this car. I'm betting this car is going to run probably for about a half an hour on this cleaner before it runs out. Again, we're running this car right now on a pressurized container using air pressure. Fuel pump is disabled and we're putting this solution through the injectors. We're not worried about the back of the intake valves. There's a lot of people that like to clean intakes by you know, putting uh, a solution into the intake by drawing it in through a vacuum hose. That is not what we're doing here. We're worried about our injectors. We're cleaning the injectors. You have to run a cleaning solution through the fuel rail to do that. And I have to tell you, this is not 100% successful. There's, there's um, conditions you can have with injectors, such as debris on the screens that you cannot clean out of there. So these still may need to be replaced. It's definitely worth a shot doing. I'm gonna pause it there, we'll let this run out, and then we'll redo all of our injector balance tests and see if we fix this car. Okay, we finished our injector cleaning service, and uh, we ran the car on the, on the tank, on the gasoline for a while to blow all the stuff out of there. And we looked at our fuel trim numbers, and we still saw very positive fuel trim numbers, so I don't think we fixed this car. Uh, we're going to redo the balance test here, see the result of that. Starting with uh, our number one injector, again I have my timer tool connected and we're going to use the same settings. We're going to use a uh, 10 millisecond shot of fuel. Same thing we did before, looking at our fuel pressure gauge, I'll do each injector, I'll keep you focused on the uh, fuel pressure gauge. And uh, one, one thing about this though, again is the engine is hot. So with the engine being hot, we can have an issue here um, as far as fuel boiling in the rail and have some different numbers here. So we might want to redo this test again when it's, a, when it's cooled off some, but we'll try it. Go ahead and turn that pump on for me, please. Okay, pump off. 44. 33. So that's identical, that was my injector number one. I believe that's what we had before. Going to injector number two now. Turn the pump off. Okay, 44. 34. So our cleaning looks like it didn't do anything at all for this car, and that, that, that can happen. This is not foolproof. Cleaning fuel injectors does not always work, even in a high concentration through the fuel rail. It does not always work. Again, you can have stuff in the screens that you can't clean out. Uh, go ahead and uh, run the pump. Pump's off. Forty-four. Wow, that one's even worse. That one dropped to thirty-five. That's uh, cylinder three, injector three. And this this was our real bad one. This one had a four psi difference on injector four compared to uh, injector one. Got to turn the pump on. Okay, pump off. 8's drop just a hair down to our starting point. Okay, yeah you can see um, same thing 37 so no improvement whatsoever using this injector injector cleaning service. Uh, I still think it was a valuable test to show that uh, now you know how to do it. I have seen this work on other cars apparently this one's going to need a set of injectors I mean, if this was your own car, you could try pull the rail and try to clean the screens out. And, and you can do that by blowing compressed air on the pintle side, being careful, make sure you got glasses on to blow those screens off. But you know, these could also have mechanical internal wear that the pintle's not seating properly. Uh, and there's just no fixing that. So this vehicle, uh, unfortunately for the owner, 
uh, is going to need a set of injectors. No reason to put the scope back up and see the, the waveforms that we saw before. We have the same problem. Uh, we don't have equal pressures with these fuel injectors and that makes sense that our fuel trim numbers are not corrected even though we did this procedure. But again, very valuable to watch, very valuable to know how to do bad injectors on this 2003 Pontiac Vibe, which is a Toyota 1.8 liter engine.